thank you all for coming to our demo day event. Uh, really proud of the students in this cohort. They have worked so hard over the last two weeks, adding things to their projects, breaking their projects, resurrecting their projects, and adding more to their projects, right? So um, I'm really, really anxious for everyone to see their presentations. I think there are some very interesting projects that have been put together and they will hold all of our attention and we'll also get to see the code behind the projects. So um, the websites are fantastic. I wanna go ahead and get started. Um, so the first person up is Sharice. Sharice, you can start whenever you're ready. Thank you, Lori. Hello, everyone. Um, my name is Sharice Watts Osorio and I'm happy that you all could join us today. Um, so a little about me. Professionally, my background is in the pharmaceutical and behavioral health industries. Now in those roles, in those positions, I've held roles such as being a people leader, an account manager, and a systems tester. Um, I became interested in the IT world during a time when my team transitioned the manual claims process into electronic. Um, as, a, as a people leader at the time, I was amazed at the final outcome. So because of that experience, I wanted to learn more about coding. And in recent times, I was able to follow through on something that I've always wanted to do. I decided to, ascend, to attend Savvy Coders because it was a perfect fit to assist me with furthering my career, um, being in the IT field and becoming a full stack developer. So that way I can sit on the IT side of the table when these extraordinary processes took place. Um, also, I love to create which is, as a side note, probably what also caught my eye about wanting to code. So because of that, my capstone focuses on one aspect of creating that I really enjoy. I love crafting and um, I love crafting hair bows for my daughter. My capstone has evolved since the beginning of this process. So what I'll do is um, show you my wireframes now so that you can see the evolution of this process. And I'll share my screen. Okay, I'm going to share my wireframes with you. So my original really never before seen wireframe was um, a parent directory. Initially, I wanted to create a website that was kind of like a parent directory for kid-friendly restaurants that focused on curbside options. And my reason for that is because I, had, um, I have little ones and on days when my husband is working and I want to grab a carry out, it really wasn't um, a conducive situation to have a pumpkin seed in one hand, a toddler in the other hand, and I'm walking into the restaurant to now walk out with the two of them and a bag. So I thought it would have been an awesome idea to have a directory that focused on the kid-friendly restaurants to help parents out in those situations. However, now that um, we're in a pandemic, everyone is curbside. So it's not really um, a needed thing right now. So my next wireframe focused on an e-commerce site that would um, kind of highlight the bows that I would make for my daughter. So in this wireframe, it was only gonna be three pages long. Um, as you can see, logo was gonna be on the top. The first page would have been kind of like a menu with search options and a user, an area where the user could um, sign up and then a cart option as well. Pictures of the merchandise, footer, logo at the bottom. Your next page would have been kind of like your um, filtered search options that you had put in on the previous page. Last option, if you had put things into the cart, you would have seen those listings there. So um, now I'll show you my website so you, that you can see what the final product ended up being. Instead of it being an e-commerce site, I still focused on airboats. And instead of the e-commerce site, I focused more so on it being um, a showcase or a place where people could reach out to me if this is something that they wanted to do for themselves as well. 
So with this website, I knew I may have little ones that would also look at the site to kind of see what type of hair bows that they would want to pick or what their mom or dad to create for them. So I wanted to make sure that it was fun. Um, one of the things that I did add on here was kind of like music. It's gonna be a fun site, so why not add music? And I did this by adding a sound bite here. I won't play the entire song, but the song that I chose was from the movie Trolls and it's called Hair Up. Um, thought it was a perfect fit because we're dealing with hair bows that you put in your hair. So why not that song? So some of the functionality on my page, um, there's a weather API. And um, what is an API you say? Well, an API is actually um, an application, inter application programming interface. Now in non-technical terms, Basically, the coding allows me to partner with another website to bring in information from that site and display it on my page. So the weather that you see here is, is live and, and, and what we're actually feeling here in St. Louis today. So um, I was able to do that with the help of Savvy and it's an awesome process that I enjoyed. I'm also on my page, I included a picture of my daughter. Uh, the, the hair bows I'm creating for, her, creating for her. So I thought it was a perfect fit to add her in the page as well. And um, one of the other functionalities that I have on the page are my, is my toolbar. And when you um, hover over each section of the toolbar, there's a transition that takes place that allows you to see that you're actually getting ready to activate going to another page. And in conjunction with that, when I go to another page, you're gonna hear a notification that's gonna occur as well. So this is my bio page where I kind of give you the history and why I like doing crafts and the other types of crafts that I do. Um, I was also able to incorporate moving pictures or videos on the page to display some of the bows that I make as well. One of the other pieces of functionality that's on the page is another hover, which allows you to enlarge the picture once you hover your mouse over there. So that gives you an opportunity to kind of see the detail a little more on that picture. And when you put, move away from it, the pictures go back to normal size. My next page is a gallery. And again, the notification that you have transitioned to another page. On this page, uh, the functionality that I have is a carousel. I decided that it would be an awesome way to be able to scroll through and kind of see all of the different types of bows that I've created for my daughter, including one that she wore to school yesterday and um, just how much fun they are to be able to make. So that's a carousel. And my last page, I call it Bow Party. Bow, have a bow party with Spotify. And this is kind of the page that I decided where, this is where you can reach out to me if you wanted to have some kind of contact with me or if you had questions about how to make the bows. So this is actually a functioning form here. You put in your name or your email address and you can type something in here. And when you click submit, I actually receive an email notification that lets me know I have someone that's interested and kind of like the verbiage that they sent me as well. And I'll have their contact information and it allows me to um, reach back out and address anything that they may have, any questions that they may have. Now, the other piece of function functionality that I have on the page is a playlist an embedded playlist. Again, I wanted, wanted it to be something fun, something that um, everyone would enjoy doing. So I embedded a playlist from Spotify onto the page and you can either hit play and listen to the songs all the way through or you can kind of pick and choose what you wanna hear. And this is fun. Everybody loves frozen, right?
Now, one of the challenges that I did run across was on my bow party page. In lieu of setting up what we have here, which is an embedded playlist, I actually wanted to incorporate another API. And the API that I wanted to incorporate was uh, Spotify. Um, just based on the time frame and um, just the different things that I would have had to do with implementing that Spotify Spotify playlist, uh, just didn't have enough time for that. So it is on a future um, products list. But the embedded um, the embedded playlist was a perfect worked out perfectly. Perfectly, it was a perfect workaround. Now. Um, Accomplishments. The accomplishments that I feel that I have, I really love how, because I wanted it to make, because I wanted to make this fun, one of the things that I've done was my background. I wanted my background to kind of transition into different colors and, and things to keep the interest of who my audience would be. And um, in conjunction with everything that I've learned from Savvy, from front end to back end, this was, in addition to that, this was also another one of my accomplishments. And as far as the coding for this, this is what it would look like. So on this page, I actually had to implement something called, um, pull it up here. Oops, sorry. I actually had to implement an animations option. So the body reflects the entire, all, all four pages of the website. And here you can see these are all of the colors that I've implemented onto that page. Um, animation, gradients, and I have it coming in and out every six seconds. Um, and as far as the timing is concerned, because I love animations, I knew I had to be mindful of anyone um, with any types of disabilities or anything of that nature that could have even activated someone who has epilepsy, for example. So I needed to make sure that all of the transitions, including the home, the picture on the home page, um, that all of those were smooth enough not to interfere with someone in that type of situation. Um, one of the other things that I was able to accomplish was stay, kind of staying on track with things. And I was able to stay on track with things because of going through the Agile Masterclass, which I learned, earned, earned, a, earned a certificate for. Um, I played the role of Scrum Master for my team. And during that, during that time, I would facilitate our daily meetings, our daily stand-up meetings, and also um, go through with assisting and facilitating our um, retrospective days. So in addition to that, Future state. Um, adding the a adding the additional API for Spotify is definitely something that I'm wanting to do. Now, my daughter is not always going to love bows, so there will come a point where I won't be making them for her anymore. So, more than likely, I'll end up transitioning the, the website also to an e-commerce website, which will give me an opportunity to kind of continue to make bows for other people and make them happy as well. Um, the other few piece of the future state in activating the e-commerce piece, um, I do have a back end on my website right now. Now, if I was to change, if I was to update the website and turn it into an e-commerce page, I would like to utilize that back end when I would have um, people sign up and register with, for the website and I would ask for a birthday. And I would really love to send birthday recognitions at those times to um, anyone that signs up for the, for the website. And in doing some research, um, utilizing the backend that I have on my website, would, I would be able to do that. So um, at this time, that's all that I have. So I will open the floor now for any comments or questions. Thank you. Great job, Sharice. Thank you. Hi, Sharice. Hi, how are you? I'm good. My name's good. Alyssa. Um, Hi, I Alyssa. really I really liked your website 
Um, my favorite part is that the theme was the hair bows. My mom used to make hair bows for me growing up all the time. <laughs> and <laughs> yours are very unique. They're really cute. Thank you. Um, do you use ribbon or do you use paper for them? Um, actually, I use faux leather. Really? Yes. Okay. Yes. A lot of them. A lot of them are. A lot of them are faux leather or felt. Okay, I might be in the market to buy a couple of those. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> They're really nice. And Thank you. In regards to your website, yes. I really like the color wheel you had. Yeah, that background, how it Thank would you. go through and change all those colors. How did you do that? Well, there's an animation option that you actually have in CSS. Okay. So you would indicate where you want the animation to occur. And in my case, I wanted it on the back pages of the entire website. Mm -hmm. So I coded it as the body and background linear gradient is, is kind of like that key that's going to bring in all of those multiple, th those, that multitude of colors. And here you can actually implement however many colors that you really want. Wow. Um, but I didn't want it to be too busy. So I just kept it to mm -hmm. four and animation is the one that will activate it all, including, you know, setting up the time frame. Oh, that's wonderful. Great job. Thank you. All right. Thanks, Sharice. You're welcome. Okay, Jacob, you are up next. Whenever uh -huh. you're ready. That would be right now. So I'm Jacob Pearson. I'm in seeking an entry level full stack web development position. I'd already gone through a computer networking and repair course at Calhoun Area Career Center during high school, picked up a CompTIA A plus certification there. Also ended up helping that class making a flight simulation computer. All sorts of fun. Recently, after my household was all vaccinated for COVID, I started working Slate, sent me on to seven coders, and now I'm enjoying the chance to learn and gain new qualifications and skills. Develop just, you know, from more than just computer repair and the actual hardware and stuff. As part of my Savvy Coders experience, I've been a Scrum developer for my cohort, went through the class with Vivek to earn a certification on Agile, I've recently designed a card game website as my capstone project, and you can now play blackjack on it. So, going to share for a moment. There we are. This is the API I ended up using. My family tends to play card games at, that, at family dinner roughly once a week. They, when you make this initial API call, what they do is they will create a deck for you give it you know the images the values everything that you would might need then when you want to manipulate that deck say you want to draw a card you send another api call to them target it with whatever your deck id was that you got from the first api call and you now have your card so on and so forth for shuffling or adding to piles whatever you wish to do um there we go. this yeah, wrong page. There we go. Welcome to the Capstone Project, as it so bombastically says. Uh, at the moment, the only game is Blackjack. I hope to, uh, one, turn that into a link, find some good pictures in order to make this really look better. Decorative borders, because why not? You can always make things look better. I really like Charisse's background. I wanted to implement the win animations into the win-loss button that comes out later when you play the game, but... I did not have the time for that, unfortunately. Then I'll probably start making the next game. Here you get a neat brief snippet. I've basically already said everything interesting here, but if you feel like it, you can read that. I am more than willing to drop this link in the chat if anyone wants to look at it later. Here is just a brief list of ways for you to contact me if you feel like it, if you want to give me ideas for the card game, if you've noticed any bugs for it, whatever. And this is where the magic actually happens. Does anyone want to play? Oh, that is uh -huh. type, reasonably decent. I want to go up higher. Oh, I just drew too many cards and I definitely busted. They, on the other hand, I think are still set. So I lose. And thus we can start again. My code, here you are. I took some efforts in order to make it as neat as possible to add in comments so that I could still understand what exactly I was doing in say six months. Here we render everything. We tell it, oh, hey, site, I would like you to update to whatever button I just clicked to whatever format well, function I just used. 
this is built into the initial thing set to run the instant you open the page, it will send that initial API request. Then Deck of Cards API will give you your response. Save that here so that you can access it later. When we click the start button, it triggers these two multiple functions for that matter. It makes the computer draw several cards where it will then save their image, save their values. Thus, you can actually access them later. Then it does the same for you because all of these functions are put together. So that is this button. That is what made these four cards pop up. Afterwards, if you click anywhere and the computer is under 17 points in total card value, it'll keep on drawing because well, why not? It'll probably be fine. Meanwhile, you click this draw button, hit button, and you get another card. Afterwards, when you feel that you finally, when you feel that you're going to win, or when you don't feel like drawing another card, click that. It will run through this chain of if elements in order to figure out what to display here. Ah, come on, there we go. In order to figure out what to display here, and then when you've finally gone through all of your cards, you shuffle and you're done. Thank you. I do believe that is all that I have to say. Oh, no, not quite. First, I need one final question. Well, do any of you have questions for me? What's the next game you're going to make? Probably Solitaire. Both me and Trey have been curious, and that sounds like both a really complex game to set up but also fairly interesting to attempt at. I think that would be fun. Anyone okay. Else? Well, thank you very much. That, oh, Justin says do roulette. Oh my gosh, what would that be like? Okay, well, thank you, Jacob. That actually be kind of interesting. Yeah, I yeah maybe. Maybe. Thank you for that. That was great. Okay, up next is Tristan. How you doing? Okay, let me share my screen real quick. You want to see it? Yes. Yes. Okay. Let's get started. Hello, my name is Tristan Gregory. I have had a passion for technology and an interest in full stack development for quite some time. I'm amazed by what coding can do, and I've tried many times to learn the language and understand conceptually what it means to problem solve. However, I did not give up. Being surrounded by many individuals who problem solve inspired me to persevere. These individuals told me I must put in countless hours into these concepts to fully understand them. One thing I have learned is programming. It's not about knowing the language well, but applying it in a situation that solves real world problems. Coding is a problem solving mechanism and the language is the tools at your disposal. By attaining one of the Savvy Preview Nights, I knew that this is my opportunity. Now that Savvy is coming to an end, I would like to show my application that is geared to improve individuals' ability to speak at functions such as interviews, pitches, and presentations. But before I show you my application, I would like to break down the process of building SpeakWise. Here's our overview. I will first talk about how I, how I incorporated Agile and Scrum during the cyber curriculum and the creation of my application. Then I would discuss my user flow and mockups of SpeakWise and after that, I will discuss the technologies used in SpeakWise, and last but not least, showcase my application, SpeakWise. I play the role of developer and on my Scrum team. My job was to write user stories for the tasks that were assigned to me, to inform the rest of my team of the objectives that needed to be completed before the sprint ended. We conducted daily stand-ups every day. This entailed the, team, the team's members' progress from the day before, the day of, and current blockers halting progress. This way we can get the details of each member to ensure that we are a productive team. In my project, SpeakWise, I use Agile, Jira as time management tools. This helped me compartmentalize and break down the features of my application, making it easier to have an MVP. How does SpeakWise work? Well, first users record and upload speeches to the platform. These speeches are then reviewed by our speech specialists and a grade is recorded. 
Our specialists have degrees in communication and specialize in speech development. Users are able to review the grades in the app, and if they would like to improve, they can, they can re-record and submit, submit the speech again. The technologies used in SpeakWise was HTML, CSS, HTML, CSS, and JavaScript to build my front end. To handle all the functionalities of my application, I use Express.js. To store any data that is handled through my backend, I use MongoDB and Amazon Web Services S3. SpeakWise is a simple application. It is user-friendly and the foundation is sound. AI is implemented to help guide users when they want, to, they want quick and sound responses. Unlike, unlike many other apps, SpeakWise is free for users of all ages. This allows us to help as many people as possible. Now I will showcase my application. Give me one second so I can share. Okay, so when a student first arrives at my application, they get they first see how to get recorded speech. Then below they, they see the features we offer. Speakwise will offer grading from certified speaking specialists to use a strong rubric to give effective feedback to the user. We will soon offer technologies such as artificial intelligence to give a feedback back to the user. Next, I go to my about page and you can see that there's the benefits of using Speakwise and my mission statement. On the, now we can navigate to the core feature of our application, which is the dashboard, which is where users are able to upload their videos. So you first click choose a file. And for my, for my example, I'm using a Shark Tank speech. Once you click on the file, you can be able to play it back <coughs> or you can full screen it, see the full view. And if this is not the file you want to submit, you will click reset. Or if you, when you're ready to upload the video file, you click submit. Once you click submit, there's an alert that tells you that the video was submitted successfully. Once the video is submitted successfully on my end, as far as the code, it is sent to my server of the AWS. Okay. As you can see, this is the code to handle all that file data. So when, once a person clicks choose a file, this is the code that allows that to happen. When the person clicks submit, if you go down to, I make an access call to my database. One second, it sends it to my database as a file and, and on my backend, which is in express.js, I use a middleware called Motor. This software is used to handle all file data. I use Motor to then send it to my AWS but S3 bucket, okay? Now let me discuss the teacher functionality. After you navigate to the teacher page, you will then pull the video down from the AWS S3 bucket. Once you, once you evaluate the video, you would then be able, be able to assign a score or a grade to that video. Let's just, for example, we say all the scores is 10. Once you click submit, it lets you know that the grade was submitted successfully. You would then be able to see that I, how I utilize MongoDB for my, for my storage of the grades. One second has to reload. And as you see for the example, you can see all the tens and how I also utilize Heroku, all tens. Okay, one moment. Future impl implementations. I would like to make my website more appealing. As you can see, the website is geared, well, the functionality of the website shines more than the look. I would like to also completely, completely in integrate the artificial intelligence feedback on a speech. And last but not least, I would also like to add authentication to my website. Thank you. Are there any questions?
Tristan, I know you worked a ton on the back end, but you have upgraded the look of your website. I love the changes that you made, I think overnight. Thank you. Right? Looks really good. Thank you so much. Okay. All right, well, we will move on. Great job. Uh, and we are gonna have Quiche go next. Hello, um, my name is Quiche Miles. And for the past seven years, I've worked within the medical industry. I also have a background within pharmaceuticals as a pharmacy tech and processing medical death and property claims. And even though I like the field I'm currently in, I feel myself becoming stagnant and you know, needing a challenge, which led me to research the coding industry. Within the coding field, I see you can always learn, learn something new. Uh, there are many languages and components to coding and I'm very intrigued into exploring this particular field. I researched the coding boot camps, which led me across Savvy Coders and enrolled into their program. Uh, once I am finished with the boot camp, my goal is to pursue a career in the tech industry where I'll be able to obtain a challenging but yet innovative experience as a web developer. Uh, by obtaining a position with the tech, uh, within the tech field, I will be able to expand and utilize the techniques I have learned from the cohort. And for my capstone project, I created a website that focuses on healthier living resources for individuals wanting to focus more on self-care. Um, we tend to devote more time and energy into others rather than ourselves. And it's not always a bad thing to put self first. And with that being said, um, you know, there's a lot of, or there's several factors that play a part in self-care, uh, getting a good night's rest, obtaining a healthy diet, and even making sure your mental well-being is at a good standing. Optimal well-being is not just focusing on your body, but also your mind and spirit. And knowing individuals changing their lifestyle, including myself, to become a healthier person overall is what led me to expand and focus my capstone on uh, the optimal self-care. Uh, now, before I get into my code and my website, I would like to show my user flow and page layout from what I had originally. So let me share my screen. Um, can you all see my user flow? Yes. yes. Okay. Okay, so um, originally this is what I um, had planned for my original website. Here's my uh, page layout as well. Um, this is like really one page, another page, and then the third. Um, I wasn't able to implement a, um, the holistic and natural provider um, link as of right now, just due to timing and the complexity. Um, and I was needing to finalize, um, you know, other priorities. And that's where Agile came into place. So, um, you know, now being Agile certified, I participate as a Scrum developer, uh, where I contributed to our daily standups um, and sprints and um, assist assisted with other user stories for our sprints. Um, and also in our daily standups, it, um, it held my team and I with any roadblocks we were facing and how to work through them along with our retrospectives. And also maintaining the two-week sprints for my personal project along with my team, it helped me prioritize my tasks and obtain a better insight on what was doable within the cohort's timeframe. Um, Agile has also helped me with my, um, my project management. Um, utilizing the JIRA board, helping with my time management and collaborating with my team to complete our task within the deadline. Um, so let me move to my website that I can show you what I've created. Just... Um, so this is my website. Um, the homepage is just like some um, general information. And also be before I get into that, um, I wanna mention that I created or I utilized JavaScript, um, HTML, CSS, um, and then a little of the MongoDB and Insomnia for my back end. And this is hosted on Netlify. 
Um, I also incorporated the weather API, you know, that shows you, I, I did the temperature in St. Louis since that's where I'm, um, that's my current residence. Um, and then I'm also currently working on my own API that will implement fruit data to be displayed on my nutrition page. So I'm moving, well, this is my first page. Um, just implemented, you know, a few pictures and just some uh, core pillars um, that is for a healthy life or healthy lifestyle. Uh, moving to my nutrition page. Once again, this is just general information. Um, where, you know, it shows you as far as the importance of, you know, why nutrition is important. Um, food provides nourishment for our bodies and provides energy as well. Um, so this just gives you a little information. Uh, once again, I implemented, you know, just some fruit pictures, some vegetables and uh, so forth. Um, and then with my resources page, um, one thing that I do like about this page is that I have, um, just some soothing music to listen to. Um, and you, while doing that, you can also go to like a different link rather for the nutritional counseling. It will stay on, uh, it will stay on the page. So I like that. And then I just incorporated, incorporated a few other uh, links as well. Uh, right now with my current, well, my current job, I had implemented their website um, just because um, within the United Healthcare, it shows that um, they like to connect um, people to programs and services that can help make it easier for you to stay healthy. So if someone needed, you know, for instance, what it says, the food pantry rent or medical care, you can search and then, you know, find resources that way. So moving to the self-care page. Um, this is something that I want to work on in my, I guess, in my future state. Um, this just shows you why self-care is important. I also implemented this, why did you take, or what did you do to take care of yourself today? Um, it doesn't fully work. I mean, you could say, you could type in something um, and then press the submit button and it'll just show right here, but it won't stick. So that's something that I want to implement and work on to improve my website. Um, I also incorporated this form button that if you send an email, it will then, or send a message, it will then come to my email. Um, and then let's see, going back, let me see. Um, now we can briefly take a look at the code and see what I'm proud of. Let me minimize this. Uh, some things I'm proud of, I like the form button um, that I had put in, which is, which is right here. Um, I wanted, I wanted my page, something that I, I guess struggled with was CSS. Um, that was challenging, it's still a challenge, but I've definitely improved in that. So, um, I'm, I am um, proud of as far as the website that I have created. And then with my CSS, I did create um, like a div within my pictures so that I could utilize Flexbox so they could be displayed um, how I want it or how they was on my um, website, if you can see. Oh, well, that's how it's supposed to be. Um, uh, speaking about, I guess, my roadblocks, I would say throughout the cohort, it was quite challenging, um, you know, not knowing anything coming from the medical industry and then moving towards the tech field. It has really been challenging for me. So um, I'm just really trying to, you know, improve my skills and um, keep doing um you know, looking at the curriculum and so forth. And let me see, I feel like I'm missing something. One moment. Um, da, da, da. I guess I'm not, I'm not sure. Yeah, I think that concludes my, um, my project. So thank you for your time.
Quiche, you did great. I love, I love how you put all of the ideas um, in your website that are going to tell a person the things that they can do to like not be so stressed, right? Like we all need that today. <laughs> I love it. It was great. Does anybody have any questions for Quiche? I don't have any questions, but I thought it was wonderful. I'm going to second you, Lori. I like that there are so many different elements to help direct people on what to do and where to go. Um, awesome job. Okay. All right, let's um, move on and we will have Clay present whenever he's ready. All right. Hello, everyone. Let me get set up here. <clears throat> Hi, my name is Clay Grisham. I have a background in the automotive industry, specifically in the service department as a service porter and pantless stint repair technician. I got into the industry as a start in the workforce, but after working in service for about three years, I decided I wanted to change my career path. I decided upon learning full stack software development with Savvy Coders because they teach very current skill sets in the world of tech. My capstone project is a website centered around alcoholism. The website will be a place where anyone can come and find resources and hear other stories on their journey to sobriety. During the course of the boot camp, I used agile methodologies to break down the boot camp into sprints, then created issue items for the course of the sprint, as well as prioritizing these items by due dates and urgency. I played the role as developer as, as well as product owner role, so it was a really cool thing to be able to work on both sides. And first, I will start by sharing my screen and showcasing my wireframe, what I originally envisioned for my website. Can everyone see that? Yes. yes. So this would have been um, my original homepage landing page. Um, I wanted to have something that kind of brought the, brought the user in highlight a purpose, my story, and possibly other people's stories, um, have a favorite quote, maybe a contact form at the bottom, <clears throat> and then add on um, a, a page that had specifically my story and what I've went through with my sobriety and um, maybe my sobriety date, things I've accomplished, um, things of that nature, and then as well as a page where people could come and post their own story um where they were at on the road to recovery or if they were just getting started or they hadn't even, even started yet um i wanted to also add a resources page because i went through this before so i know what it's like and i know um what it is to be looking for really valuable resources during this time and um maybe uh, the purpose of the website um which i actually laid on on the home page which we will which we will get to This is my homepage. My website is called Chameleon Stories. I chose the name Chameleon Stories because millions and millions of Americans alone suffer from addiction. And majority of these people, you would have no idea that they um, have uh, any sort of substance abuse or alcohol abuse or addiction issues. And they blend right into society as normal people. So I thought it was very fitting um, to name the website Chameleon Stories. I decided to implement a weather API because originally I was going to become a meteorologist before I learned about software development. So I thought that was just a really cool thing to kind of add in there. Also added a little bit of information about myself, um, how old I am, um, I believe how, how long I've been sober myself and um, kind of an overview of what the website does. Moving on to sharing your story, I wanted to create a form that users could come in and make a post and share where they are with their journey with sobriety or anything else recovery or alcoholism related. Um, so I made a little form that they could put a title in and share their story wherever they are at on their journey. And this form would share to the stories page, which is still a work in progress. But this is the general um, kind of layout and styling that I'm aiming for right now, um, which there is some future state that I will talk about a little bit later with this page. 
And lastly, I wanted to add a resources page because like I had said, I've been through this situation before and I know how critical it is to have adequate and reliable resources um, along your journey. So I wanted to um, kind of handpick these and put these in the website as some more external link. <clears throat> Moving on to um, a little bit of code. I use um, a website called, uh, or an application called um, Insomnia. And basically what Insomnia does is it takes your API calls for the form I was building. So I have a little form set up here or um, a little title and post. And this is the title. This is my first post. I'm nervous. And uh, the post, the um, details of the post, I am new here. Please give me some advice. And this will send and show that it is sent. And then you can go to your records. Um, and you can use this locally instead of using your MongoDB database. And it's, it will attach an ID and it will show that it has posted correctly. And you can go back into your terminal of um, VS Code and you can see that it is posted. And I actually got all the posts by clicking get all post records. Some future state of my content uh, or my some future state of my application I want to incorporate is uh, more styling on the homepage. I want it to be more welcoming and interactive to the user. Um, maybe reference back to my wireframe um, and kind of use some elements from there to really bring the user in and keep them on the page. I also have to keep styling the story. I maybe want to add um, a little random picture, maybe some more <clears throat> like boxing styling for each post. So they're separated a little bit more, make it all a little more more pleasing to the eye and um, things of that nature. And with that, I will turn it over to any questions and thank you all for joining this evening. Great job. I'm so proud of you for wanting to help others and for also sharing a little bit about your story. Thank you. Very good. Okay, it looks like people are posting in the chat for you. Okay, great job. Carlos, you are up next. Hi, my name is Carlos. For the past 20 years, my background has been in retail and sales management. In my last career, I was constantly frustrated by the disconnect between the software that we used and what we needed to succeed. Someone I used to work with graduated from this boot camp and told me how successful Savvy Coders was in helping her make a career change. I already loved information technology and thought that this would be a great opportunity to break into an IT career and create software that would make someone else's job easier. My capstone project attempts to do just that. For example, how frustrating is it when you're craving your favorite snack only to drive up or drive through and discover they just ran out? This app would solve this problem for both the customer and the business. So let's take a look at what I created. Sorry, my internet is just a little bit slow here. Okay, so let's start with the wireframes and what um, I originally envisioned my project to be. Uh, this was my original user flow, and the landing page would take uh, the user to the different days of the week, and they could plan out that day, and then it would take them to a print form. Um, eventually, I had to scale back, and so we're just going to plan one day. Um, this way, I was able to have a minimum viable product. Um, but my end product did turn out surprisingly close to my original plan because I had a pretty clear idea of what I wanted to do. This was the original landing page taking you to the different days, a data page where you could input that would take you to a print page that you could print what you inputted, and a contact page. And the bonus was that I ended up having a lot more function than I originally hoped for after this cohort. Uh, the Agile method that we used was Scrum, and I was the developer on a Scrum team. And so in that capacity, I participated in daily standups, sprint plannings and reviews, and I collaborated with my team on organizing the backlog and writing user stories. Uh, when it came to my capstone, I mirrored my sprints to the sprints in class. So I added functionality in each sprint as we learned them, and I collaborated with my team to solve each other's coding problems. And this was probably the best and the most beneficial part of using Scrum. 
uh, the sprints helped me to keep on track and to have a presentable product. Uh, the purpose of this app is to help small businesses forecast perishables. Um, this is something that can be very expensive and difficult to do. Uh, the end result, hopefully, is to increase the sales and decrease waste. Uh, the, the target user would be smaller businesses such as bakeries, donut shops, or even restaurants and grocery stores. All of them are in need of this kind of forecasting app. Uh, this map, this app makes it easier to forecast because it gives a useful snapshot of data designed to see where you've been and where you're going. Uh, this is the kind of things that are usually missing in similar software. I've used many different types of software over my time, and often the data is stored in another section of the app or even in completely different software. Uh, wouldn't it be better if it was all right at your fingertips? And this app works because humans are creatures of habit. Watch them long enough and trends will always appear. Uh, if you're looking at people with the right perspective, you will always be able to generally predict what will happen, whether you're looking at traffic on the highway, midterm elections, or even how many donuts they will buy on a Monday. The trick is to find the right perspective. All right, so let's take a look at how this works. Uh, my app is called Groundhog Production Planner, and this cute little logo was designed by my daughter for me. And he's talking to us there. Uh, we all know that the groundhog tries to forecast the weather and he's often wrong. Uh, however, uh, this groundhog, as you can see, has his own laptop and he knows how to run a backend. So he's a lot better at it. Uh, but instead of forecasting the next six weeks of weather, we're going to be forecasting the next six days of sales. Uh, that being said, weather is still a very important uh, aspect of forecasting sales. Um, it looks like we got some rain in the forecast later on. Um, rain typically drives up businesses, especially if they have a drive through or delivery service, um, or if there's a snowstorm coming up, businesses will have to plan for that and alter their production. Uh, everything in this rectangle here is dynamic. So this is um, a weather API that I'm pulling from, and it's going to give us always the current uh, weekly forecast. So it's just the description, highs and lows. And uh, on the left side, the days of the week is um, JavaScript that I wrote so that the computer would know what tomorrow is and uh, that tomorrow is Friday, the next day is Saturday, because obviously computers don't know those things. Um, and then if it, we were looking at it on a mobile device, that's what it would look like on an iPhone 10. Okay, uh, the contact page um, is where businesses can reach out and on how they could use this app and how it could forecast their business better. So they would just send something and form spree uh, would host it and send it to the site administrator. Sorry, my computer just froze for a second there. On the post page is where um, it allows users to record their data and send it to a database. So these are example products of the kind of businesses that may want to use this kind of app. Um, so we'll say that on last Monday, we made Asiago bagels and we did 46, 36, and 10. So that's going to send us to the database and it's going to redirect us back to home. Uh, so now this person can start uh, planning their production, and we're going to plan Monday's production. And as you can see, uh, the last entry we put in here is on the bottom of our table uh, because that was the most recent Monday. Uh, these two tables are two examples of products that business may need to forecast. Um, so they show both the customer behavior in the middle and the business behavior. And then here would be the end result. Um, so when you're looking at sales week over week, it can be misleading if you don't see it in the context of what was made and what was left over. So the idea is that we're trying to find a trend. Um, so the first week they sold 16 and didn't seem to be enough. So they bumped it up to 30 and they sold 22, but they had a lot left over. So they got scared and they scaled it back, but then they ran out. So they went up again and it still wasn't enough. So they went up again, again, and it looks, it looks like the sales are increasing here. And they went to the same number there apparently and sales went down just a little bit. 
um, but that's okay. Uh, so every part of this table is dynamic. Um, the data is being pulled from the database on MongoDB, which is hosted on Heroku. And um, it's just filtering this specific product on this specific day of the week and giving it to us in a chronological order. Um, the average is always going to be dynamic. It's always going to give you the average of the last six days. And the rate is also dynamic, and it's going to give us the rate of change of what's happening. So if we look at last week was 26, our average was 24, round that up to two, looks like 26 is a pretty good idea of what we might need. Um, and then the other functioning part of this is that uh, when you start with the minimum number, the minimum is always going to be whatever the minimum number was sold in the last six weeks. So if we go over here, 36 looks like 36 was the least amount of Asiago bagels that we sold, uh, but we'll probably want to do more than that. So we click save and print and it saves the user's input and displays it on a nice user friendly page that they can print it. Print. Now we can print it and send it to the baker and they can make Asiago bagels for us. Um, my database is MongoDB, which is an excellent free to use uh, service that stores your data and the schema that you put it in. And it's being hosted on Heroku. And as you can see, we just got reams and reams and reams of data, which is what would happen in a business. Um, but this is all being filtered and organized and put in a useful way for the user. Um, obstacles in general was the single page application converting to that was very difficult. I had to change a lot of the things that I originally coded. Um, and then the API itself, um, this over here is my, um, my sales API that I created and we're filtering different aspects of it. But then I also had to teach the computer how to do different math functions so that it could help the user with that. Um, as far as future states go, um, I would probably like just a little bit more on the data end. Um, it'd be nice if the user had the option to go back a little bit farther in time, uh, especially if there was some inclement weather that threw things off for a while, or maybe a pandemic would change things. Uh, you might want to go back a little bit more in time um, or give the option of going back a whole year in time, um, especially since you know, if you're planning for a holiday, things like Mother's Day, people shop a little bit differently. Um, that is my application is the application that I wish I had many years ago to help me with my different business ventures. Uh, if there's not any questions, thank you very much for your time. Great job, Carlos. I love this because it gives us a little bit of a view into, you know, what it takes to, to get our stuff out on the shelves and in through the drive through. I love it. Thanks. Okay. Alyssa loves the embedded table. Thank you. <laughs> okay. All right. Who is next? Tomoki is next. Hi. Um, I'll go ahead and share. All right. Um, so I'm Tomoki and uh, Thank you for coming today to um, take a look at all our projects. So, so the last couple of years I've been working for entry level positions and um, over also during that time I've learned a lot about technical skills. So I hope to use that um, knowledge and um, things I've learned to enter the tech industry. Um, I was first introduced to graphic design and editing software in high school, and in college, I learned some programming. This eventually led to an interest in a uh, career in the technical industry. Uh, I've attended the Savvy Coders Full Stack web development course, and there learned more about web development, like HTML, CSS, J JavaScript, and um, the other tools that uh, we can use, um, Node Packages, JIT, and uh, MongoDB. Um, it does teach us a lot about development, but the one of the major things that they um, focused on in this cohort and in this uh, curriculum is uh, the actual development process and the workflow that goes into that. So I'll, I'll share. I'll start by sharing what I learned about that. Um, we learned about the Agile framework in this bootcamp, um, with a focus on the Scrum methodology. 
Um, we'd all we'd all daily participate in a uh, daily stand up process, going through um, and uh, determining what needs to be done and what we did yesterday and the like. Um, from the beginning, we'd organize our curriculum into two week sprints, and each topic would be covered and described in our Jira boards. Um, every day, we would talk about our progress from what we completed uh, previously to what we were doing today. Um, at the end of our two-week sprints, we would have retrospectives to um, knock off and list off what uh, struggles and what uh, achievements we'd completed in those two weeks. Um, this was a really great learning experience because it introduced me to a professional tool that uh, allow us to, um, allows us to um, organize our workflow and our um, general uh, complete completeness of our projects. Um, the tool used was Jira from Atlassian. Um, it's a powerful tool and uh, allows us to organize um, our um, topics into sprints, uh, stories, and epics. And uh, here we have an example sprint that we actually worked on in class. So we go through and assign each person a certain thing and we would have a little description here uh, um, corresponding with the curriculum we would be learning. Um, my project is intended to make it easier to see a um, single person social media post across multiple websites. Um, the basic idea is to serve it all onto a single uh, page without having to make multiple accounts or use the different apps. Um, I want to use um, social media APIs are rather complex. So I want to eventually use them to um, parse user bios for links and um, use that to uh, serve embedded content on the page. So from the beginning, we have my wireframes um, and it has to be designed for multiple screens. So con considering 80% of internet traffic comes from mobile devices by some estimates, I think it's important to uh, try and at least get some of that implemented for with media queries. So my thought process with the desktop was, uh, if you're using a desktop, you want higher information density. So I would have multiple posts across the screen instead of maybe one for, as you can see, the uh, larger or smaller views. So for here we have a tablet and we have a phone. Tablet will have, um, ideally a longer post that is wider. So it's because it's more comfortable to read on a larger screen. And then the phone will have the singular posts across the screen because that's really all that can fit. And it's more comfortable to uh, look at it this way because we're used to looking at social media certainly on our phones. Um, for me learning the SPA was a huge challenge. And not only did we need to learn JavaScript but we also had to learn to use some node packages. Um, we also all use Git to uh, push our projects and store our, um, all of our files. So, so here's my web page. Um, as you can see, I have that intro there. And then this is the styling, or all this is the styling, and that's my API call for the weather. Um, and you can see this little nav bar is following us alongside this thing, which is where you would be post uh, typing in your username and it would uh, search their bio and serve their posts uh, dynamically after you hit the submit button. So if we scroll down here, we can see all I have, all I have this here. So that's the tweets, that's the Instagram embeds, and this is a YouTube embeds. If I do this, I can show off my, I guess, media queries. So when I do that media query, it pushes that from the right to the underneath, and this becomes one, one, one. If I do an iPad, it's a similar story. And when you do smallest phone, it makes it a lot thinner. So you get like that, and you have that, and everything is smaller, so it's easier to see. Um, okay, 
Um, as far as the future state, I want to learn the YouTube API and the Twitter APIs fully so I can actually um, fully implement them on my website. Um, another idea I had was to look at Linktree pages and pull links from that. So that would be parsing an entire HTML page, I think, to uh, pull that sort of information. Um, my largest challenge was getting used to the structure of a single page application and uh, APIs and JSON files are a little confusing, but I'm, I'm getting there. Um, so for conclusion, I'd like to say that um, using node packages and working with savvy coders to build a website has taught me that programming is often a huge collaborative effort between yourself, your team, and people you will never meet that build all the things for you. That, so like node packages. You're never going to meet the people that made them, but you will appreciate them. Um, this is why we need tools like Agile and Jira to help us organize our work. And it keeps everything um, organized and so that everyone can see progress so everyone can help. Uh, I want to thank you for your time. And um, if you have any questions, now is the time. And then I have my links down here. Tomoki, that was great. Again, I can see such growth from yesterday even to today. Great job. I love this, this website. I love what it does. Thank you. Okay, so I am going to call Canel, but I'm calling her out of order. So are you ready to go, Canel? I'm ready. Okay, go ahead whenever you're ready. Okay, just give me one second. All right, uh, thank you for joining us today. Uh, my name is Kennell Moore, and I have been a demo assistant for the past 12 years, and I'm in the process of making a career change. Um, I'm currently, you know, a student at Savvy Coders, and I'm working on uh, becoming a full stack developer. Um, so growing up, I've had the honor of watching my dad work his way up from being a customer service rep at Verizon to now working as a network engineer at Vanderbilt US Space for Space. And he is my inspiration for entering the tech field. Um, after exploring um, my options in tech roles and learning that I have many ideas for new applications, I determined that software engineering was the role for me and I only need the skills in order to make them come to life. Um, so I tried to self-teach my, uh, self myself for a bit, and I quickly learned that I need a lot more structure, and that is what led me to Savvy Quoters. And so for my capstone project, I have created a Workout Buddy app that is a place where working out can be rewarding and fun, and in this app, friends will be able to join workout challenges, view each other's progress, ar arrange a virtual or outdoor workouts, and in-app rewards to help keep them motivated. Okay. And so basically, um, I created this app because for people like me working out on your own, you know, can sometimes be lonely and not to mention can get uh, boring very quickly. And so if you're not aware of uh, the other options outside of just working, um, working out in the gym, uh, you simply, uh, you need, you need more options just to know that there's, there's something else that could possibly be for you. And so I created this app um, after numerous failed attempts uh, throughout the years at a solo fitness journey. I was introduced to the world of outdoor slash um, indoor workout groups, aka boot camps. And I fell in love with the amount of encouragement, motivation, and support. And within a few months, I lost 40 pounds. And so um, I wanted to create um, basically one common space that makes all of these apps easily, all of these groups easily accessible to people who like me, who, who need that, that push. Okay, so I'm gonna share my screen. One second. Okay, can you guys see my screen? Okay, so this is my home page, and basically here, um, here's my navigation bar. Here, um, this is where people will be able to log into their profiles, 
And um, here, uh, so the website is pretty much broken up into three major sections. Um, you'll have your workout section where you can discover workouts and challenges, and you can complete them solo or you can join your friends in the virtual workout room. You have the play section, um, which is pretty much the social media aspect of the site. Um, you'll be able to blog your journey, post photos, and receive or offer words of encouragement from your peers. And then the explore section is where you come to find these uh, these boot camps or outdoor workout groups I speak of that um, are usually hard to find unless you know about them through word of mouth or if you know someone that is in them. So I want to make a place where you can um you know have access to to these groups so that's my home page and here's my my weather api here um this is like this is my about page this is like um my personal story to kind of connect with with people um who use the app and here's my contact page and then here is my workout page so what you have here is um, this is going to be this is going to be the uh, area where people find their workout videos. Um, so for now, uh, originally I wanted to have the YouTube uh, API here, um, but then I realized uh, I don't want people to be able to look up just any kind of video. Um, you know, instead of working out, they'll be watching cat videos. So I'm going to in the future have uh, my own gallery of workout videos so for now i have um some youtube videos and the gallery is going to consist of um, beginner workouts intermediate workouts and advanced workouts so after you choose your workout you figure if you want to work out solo or if you want to um, find a partner and so you would be able to go through your friends list um with people that you know or people you've connected with and you can schedule to go into the workout room the virtual workout room here um this is for people who just want to work out at home okay and so here is the play page um for now uh this is i'm going to have a um an api here where it's kind of the social media aspect like i was saying um, you'll be able to blog your journey, you can post photos, and you can receive or offer ways of encouragement. So this is kind of like the, the fun play area here. And then this is going to be the explore area. Um, and so this area, I, I need to create a database um, here, which is, I literally will have to find, um, you know, these workout groups in, in each city. That way people have access to um, finding uh, the workout groups from wherever they are located. Okay, so let me see. And let me pull up my code, sorry. Okay. All right, I need to pull up my code. Just give me one second. Okay. So here is my uh, here's my code here, and basically, I would say to um, the, uh, the the trained eye, my code is pretty simple. Um, but to the untrained eye and to a learning eye, as such as myself, um, this is more than I ever thought it could be. I learned how to turn my page into a single page application. Um, you know, I learned how to create folders uh, such as components that hold your views here. Um, and I learned how to incorporate a, a weather API where you have to have access to a, a key in order to make it work. And um, let's see, my CSS is here. 
Uh, I feel like I, I really love uh, the CSS aspect. I think I like front end more than, more than back end. Um, but yeah, this is, uh, this is my app. And if you guys have any questions, I would uh, love to hear from you. I do love, I know I've told you this before, but I love the, you know, workout, play, explore, because, you know, working out can sometimes just be working out. But if you think about mm -hmm. it as like exploring, <laughs> maybe that helps a little bit. Thank you. You did a great job. Great Thank job. You. Good job, Canal. Thank you. You're welcome. Congrats on losing 40 pounds. I recently lost 11, so I need to take a page out of your book. <laughs> <laughs> thank you you guys can talk afterwards we will <laughs> um okay so i'm gonna take um dan next dan are you ready okay hello everybody uh thanks for uh coming out uh tonight uh taking a few moments to uh watch my presentations again my name is dan deguire and uh currently i work as a supply chain specialist at eighth avenue food and provisions uh post holdings company i enjoy my uh company and my industry however my true passion lies in tobacco development um my current role, I do a lot of order entry. Um, and then with my previous goal uh, job, I worked at Hub Group. And in addition to working in the logistics sphere, I, I also learned uh, SQL, uh, Microsoft Access, Excel, and then uh, database management. I also learned a little bit about Python and uh, a little bit about uh, data warehousing. Currently, I am getting ready to graduate Savvy Coders. I took Savvy Coders to uh, learn JavaScript. And then after the boot camp, I plan on taking uh, classes at MongoDB University. Like I said, I'm very, very passionate about the uh, back end. Uh, that's really where I want to learn uh, a little bit but more. And then for my capstone is a K-9 Golden Years Foundation. It specializes in providing tech resources to help get senior dogs uh, rescued. Senior dogs have, I think, like three to four times, this is per ACP, ASPCA, uh, three times less likely to get uh, rescued. So I want to create tools that kind of solve that issue. Um, in addition, uh, I am Agile certified. Um, in uh, Savvy Coders, uh, I got uh, certified as a developer. We did daily standups, which really helped address any issues and roadblocks. And also just to kind of keep everyone on track, we did retrospectives to kind of learn from our sprint and also uh, just kind of reflecting and almost just getting ready for the next sprint. And then we did uh, sprint planning, which uh, we uh, essentially just got ready to roll for the next round, which kind of just kind of just talked about what what are we going to do next. Uh, the result was a boosted productivity, uh, prioritization of task, remove impediments, and it kept work visible. That was the biggest thing for me. I'm a visual person, so uh, just having a place just to see everything was very important. And here's my scrum board. You see that I still have some work in progress. Uh, uh, some issues that I'm having, that's why these are kind. These have been here for a while. So I'll touch on kind of the issues here in a moment. Um, and then I'm gonna go over the kind of the organization. I already kind of touched on it, but it's uh, just tech uh, resources to rescues, uh, kind of like APIs and, tools that they can use to implement on their own website, including tutorials. Right now, the audience is uh, students, teachers, mentors, hiring managers, failing developers, friends, and family. Eventually, uh, when the uh, organization does go live, it will be local rescues, web developers, students, business leaders, and also dog lovers. And then I did a quick SWOT analysis uh, just to figure out uh, if this is a good thing to progress with. 
Uh, the strength is it is free for rescue organizations. There's not a lot of revenue in the, uh, in the field of uh, dog rescue, which also kind of leads to a weakness since there's not a lot of revenue. Uh, it will mostly be volunteers, which might into having issues with recruitment. The opportunities is getting more senior pets and dogs adopted and also attracting a larger audience. The threat is it is open source, so all this code can be used by other developers, potentially corporations that could do what we can with a lot more revenue. And then here are my wireframes, uh, kind of going down where the logo is up here, navigation body, social media, and then uh, this is a work in progress. I don't have any links at the bottom just yet. Uh, here's the user flow. Uh, you got a home about contact dog and submit, and this is how every this is how we found that everybody kind of works through the site at least so far. And then here are the color palettes. Um, I'm still working on this. I'm getting ready to change. I don't really like this gold, so that's kind of a work in progress is changing the color palette a little bit. I do like these, but not so much these. And then if you wanted to follow along, you can uh, go to dandeguire.com and it will take you to the link tree and then you can click on the capstone live if you're interested or you want to connect on LinkedIn, you can do that as well. Or if you want to see the code, it's right here. And then here's the logo. Um, it, uh, I did create it and this is a picture of my dog Scarlet. I used uh, GIMP to uh, uh, posterize and do a threshold effect on it. So it uh, kind of takes all the uh, color out and then puts it back in and kind of flattens it. And then here's the navigation. We got a home about contact the lost board and submit. And then here's the home page. So, Go ahead and open it from here. It's right here. So here's the home page. It just kind of goes over the organization a little bit. And uh, here are the dogs. Uh, the, these are the dogs of the organization. This is my dog, Scarlet. Some interesting facts. And then here is an API that I use just to track how many users have uh, visited my website. Now we have uh, 1766. And then I haven't refreshed this in a while, so it might be a couple more. Yeah, 1768, so uh, there's been two, um, one other than me. Um, and then this is an API that I used. Here's the code. Uh, if you have any additional questions on the code, we can go over it, but I'm not gonna really dig too deep into it. Um, and then we have a about page, which is right here. It kind of goes over the uh, senior patch just a little bit more. Um, I do have another API right here that kind of pulls a big master list of dogs. Uh, this one uh, is undefined because the record did get pulled. So I will have to revise that. So that's, uh, that's something that I'm working on is getting a comprehensive list. Um, and then I can also pull multiple dogs. So it's pulling all kinds of dogs. And then let's move over to the contact page real quick. It, uh, I used form spree for my form, which allows uh, anyone to send a message. So hello, emailing about Joe, which is a pet. Thanks. And then I'm gonna go ahead and send that. And then go ahead and get back to the contact. And then uh, go ahead and uh, it'll send over here. So we got a new form. So it's like emailing about Joe. So it sends a quick email over. Um, so it makes it easier for anybody to reach out. And also since we all, there's a lot of, like it is a volunteer, we don't necessarily have someone that can kind of hang on the phone line. So kind of streamlines that. And then also I have an inline Google Maps, which, uh, my whole website is uh, mobile friendly, but including this. So if you do want to just kind of scroll around on your iPhone or your iPad, it works. And this whole website does work as well for uh, mobile friendly. And then this is the main API I used. Uh, this used uh, ExpressJS, MongoDB, and Heroku, um, which uh, this is kind of where my passion kind of lies is more of the back end with the data and uh, bringing it up to the front end. 
um, I'm going to go over to the uh, the this is uh, the loss board. This shows all the animals that have been submitted. And then if you go over here to MongoDB, you'll see them. It's sometimes MongoDB is slow, but let's see. So we got three, we got Husky, and then we got a German Shepherd, and then we got a Pitbull. And then also, if you go over here to Heroku, you'll see them. So if you wanna go to next, and then, there's a request form. So if you wanted, uh, this is uh, how to report a lost senior dog. So say you have a lab named Molly, size is medium, and then say playful, friendly, listens well, maybe not good with children. So if you go ahead and submit that, I don't know why it's not submitting, but uh, it might be my internet, but uh, yeah, my internet's been really slow, but eventually it will submit and then it will come over here and then I'll add to this. Oh, oh yeah, there we go. It was submitting, it's just being slow. Um, so, and then with my future state, uh, I wanted to use a pet finder API, which is by Purina. It has authentication, which uh, is a challenge. And I, I got the authentication, but it just took a while. I do want to get some drop down menus here just to kind of streamline this and to kind of reduce clutter. I want to modernize the color palette, get rid of this kind of green and make it like make it a little bit more modern. I want to like once we get the pet finder API, we're going to need I'm going to need to create a tutorial because there's just going to be a lot of information. And then eventually I do want to integrate Tableau and then MongoDB Compass because there will be so much data coming from this API that if you don't have a way to kind of compile it, then it's just gonna be a lot of clutter. Um, like I said, with the pet API, it just, it had a lot of uh, issues with getting authenticated. And uh, so that's what I'm kind of working on now to bring that all to the front end. Um, I'm gonna show you real quick what I'm talking about. So you get a token whenever you uh, uh, want to authenticate and it does expire. So each time you reload the website, you'll need to get a new fetch to get a new token. So it ha it's it's dynamic to get dynamic data. So there is a package uh, that I was able to use, which uh, is something that I do have on my uh, development branch. I haven't uh, uh, integrated it to my main website yet, just because there's so much to do. And then uh, here's how I, you can connect with me. Uh, here's my capstone, uh, here's my LinkedIn email and then TikTok. And uh, does anybody have any questions? Dan, you are so passionate about this website. I can see I can see that I'll be able to find this, you know, someday and look for my own aging dog and, you know, maybe be able to um, get one for myself. Hopefully I won't be looking for mine, but so many cool technologies. It's just amazing. Thank you. Okay. All right. Good job. Okay. So last but not least, we have Carmen. Whenever you're ready. Can you hear me? <clears throat> yes. Okay. I am Carmen Beers. My background is in business management. I am a self-motivated manager with over 10 years of experience managing multiple projects and teams simultaneously. I'm highly skilled in onboarding, training teams on new processes, and completing projects under budget. I am attending Savvy Coda's Full Stack Development Bootcamp in hopes to expand my knowledge in the technical industry. During the pandemic, I noticed that tech careers were the least affected. I wanted to expand my knowledge as a way to motivate people over this industry and others. This way I can motivate performance. I used Agile to examine where I was in creating my capstone. In my capstone, I wanted to create a place where you could find local bands doing live performances. Agile helped me adapt if I needed to change directions with this project. 
And I'm grateful for the daily standups as they help me identify others who could give me input and help me possibly source resolutions if issues came up. The reason why I chose to create a live performance info page for my capstone is because I remember just how much music has been a part of my life. I remember the first time I fell in love with music. I had no idea how much different, genre, different genres would grow on me. I realized music could not only be something I listened to in my past time, but it also helped me finish goals inside and outside of the workplace. Music helped cheer me up. It even helped me rent if I needed to shout out lyrics. With the power of positive affirmations and a lot of encouragement, I think music can help a lot of people reach their goals. Let's dive in and see what inviting music into your life can do for you. So here's my wireframe. I wanted to create a homepage that kind of lets you know that this is for all age groups that will speak to different genres. And in this, I decided the second page would be more like videos and pictures and even have some venues listed. And the last page, perhaps we can include some external links. So that's where you will find other things like Airbnbs, hotels, and transportation. So that was my plan. In creating the website, I came over across many obstacles. Um, as you can see, here's the homepage. I thought it'd be great to implement the weather API so you'll know just exactly what you'll be facing as you're heading into your adventures. I even created a little, um, I inputted a little video here where it just kind of speaks to music therapy and what music has to offer. So on the homepage, you can also find different genres. And for instance, if you are into fitness, into working out, you can click here and there you are. It takes you right to Zoom so you can find out what's near you that may be like Zumba or anything like that, working out that also kind of help you stay on beat and play music. And then I decided, well, maybe if someone came across this page, they want to book their stay and they know that can be taken care of right away. Since in this live performances, I also wanted to make sure we were supporting local businesses. So here, if you click car rental, it's not going to take you to a bigger brand. It's going to take you to some locally owned car rental hosts. For example, this is Clean Cars by Chris. He is local, small time, and has plenty of options that you may not see at a bigger brand. So while you're looking for your weekend entertainment, you could also rent one of these vehicles. Or maybe you're coming into town, you can rent one of these vehicles. And also to support some of our small business locally, we'll be open to listing more Airbnbs. So once we get other people that would like their Airbnbs listed, you can just click here and their listing will come right up and you can book your reservation. So that is the home page. Now, the about page, that is where you're gonna find all the entertainment. So, Kind of what I wanted to do was allow people to share what they wanted to be shared about their band. So what we'll have here is anything they've submitted themselves about their band, as well as a performance maybe they want to share with everyone. So you have the option to click a video here.
So that's just like a little snippet of what they can show off to you. That way you'll get excited about seeing them. So here's the Contact Us page. This is where we allow people to go in and whether you have a venue or you have a van, you can input the email here. And maybe you wanna say a little bit about your band. Like you can say, um, you know, we are kid friendly. And then you can choose to submit. That sends it right to us. It'll send us an email and we'll get an email just like this, for instance. That will give us an opportunity to reach out to you and collect any pictures you want or any videos you want. That way you have a presence on our page when people come to find you. So that is the website. And I was just so happy to create a place where we can celebrate local entertainment and live performance. Just a little peek at my coding. Um, it was a lot of fun to do this. One of the things that I still want to kind of incorporate is a bigger resource page. So maybe that uh, other entrepreneurs can still have an opportunity. Maybe they're not inside necessarily um, inside the logistics of getting to where you need to go as far as uh, your entertainment, but maybe we can still support other small business owners. So we plan on adding a resource page in doing that. and. Um, that would be for the future though, that, that's not gonna happen right now, but I'm still open to collecting as much as information as we can so we can create a place for everyone to support their business. That concludes our presentation if there is no question. Great job. I do love the fact that you are including local businesses. I mean, we need that so much, right? I love that. And I love live music, so don't we all? Great job, great job. Well, that's everybody. That was um, a lot of great presenting, a lot of unique ideas, a lot of creativity, and a lot of hard work. I want to thank um, Alyssa for being here and and you know joining in with input. And I know Michelle from Accenture is on the phone. Um, she had the are you there? Sorry, I, I just don't have my camera on, so I apologize. Okay, okay good. Well, thank you so much for coming. Thoroughly enjoyed it, and I'm really grateful to have had the opportunity to see everyone's projects um, and look forward to continuing the conversation. With some good. Candidates. Thanks, Michelle. Michelle. Okay. So, everybody, take a deep breath. You did a great job. You probably maybe did something that you were really unsure of and weren't sure that you could do. So you did it. So take a deep breath. I'm so proud of all of you. Come such a long way, even in the last three days. Go celebrate and um, stay tuned. I'm going to put out. Um, I'm going to put out some information on a job seeking workshop to you guys. Okay, and um, whoever wants to join can join. And uh, we're going to have graduation next Tuesday, Tuesday, yeah, Tuesday at six. Okay, so uh, I'm here for you. If you have anything that you need to talk to me about, reach out to me. Um, otherwise, great job by all. And you can have the rest of your evening back. Thank all right? you. It was Thank quite you. a pleasure to be presenting. Thank you. Thank you. Great job, everyone. Yep. Thank you, everyone. Good night. Jacob, you were saying it was it's like it was quite the pleasure and then somebody cut him off. <laughs> Great job, everybody.